Well, uh, check, check one, two, check. Guys, welcome to the nachos. Uh, yeah. yeah, Dragon Ball Z panel. Mm. I am, I am uh, Peter Klamis. I played uh, Goku and uh, and Master Roshi, which not too many people know about. It's a little hidden Aww. secret. And uh, my name is Vic Mignana, and uh, I played. <laughs> really? Oh yeah, that's his name. Um, I, uh, I actually played two characters. I, I didn't know you played Roshi, and a lot of people don't know that I played Berter uh, in the Ginyu Force. Berter! Uh, but Broly is uh, the guy I've been playing for 20-some years, and I love him. He doesn't love me, but I love him. He doesn't love anyone. Exactly. <laughs> uh, my name is Chuck Huber. My first Dragon Ball Z ro uh, role was uh, Garlic Jr. and his henchman Mustard. After that, I played Android 17 and Kibito, Emperor Pilaf, Android 13, Master Shen, and Mr. Shu, uh, Invisible Guy, and a guy who had one line driving a truck, and he said, Hey, paper clips! That's all I said. <laughs> I don't know what it was. So basically everyone in Dragon Ball. Chuck has played. Oh, and I sang the theme song for, uh, for Dragon Ball Kai, for the series, for the TV series. I didn't sing anything. Um, but he's going to offered, right now. They, they offered, I tried, and then they said, yeah, that, that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> and, uh, um, so, you know what, I think what we might do is just kind of open this up to questions, and I'm sure you oh, guys Hobby's have... Oh, uh, Hobby's got a mic. Uh, and we, oh, right here. Alright guys, so I have the main house mic, so we're going to do the show, right? Uh, no, I just talked this loud, I don't know. Um, so we're going to do the show, and we're going to raise our hands, and then we're going to have to get ready to ask some questions. One up, here. One up here. What was it like playing Android 17? I loved it. Okay. To be very honest, that's a common question, I think. What is your favorite line or lines that you delivered as your respective Dragon Ball characters? Well, just recently with Super, Android 17 had a very powerful line, He's, and it was sort of the arc of his character, him saying, look at me sacrificing himself, look at me being all human. I love that. That was fun. Also, uh, Emperor Pilaf. Ah! That was one of my favorites. The fun one. Uh, of the two characters I did, uh, my favorite Master Roshi line was probably, uh, Hey, Goku! Which he did every single time. Uh, uh, my favorite Goku line was, uh, <clears throat> That tub of lard was a good warm-up. Every time. I don't know why it makes me laugh. <laughs> my uh, favorite line, I can sum up all of Broly's dialogue in one word, pretty much. Kakarot. <laughs> Just yell Kakarot. That, I memorized that, by the way. We don't have to memorize our lines, but I memorized that one. Kakarot. That's the whole second movie, yeah? Any questions? Any questions? Oh, we got a few now. Here we go. Can you say you can't beat You can't beat me when I'm Super 17. Yeah. I want to hear him do it now. Bobby, hey, let him do it. I want to hear him do it. See if you can take my part. Do it. You can't beat me with a Super 17. Nice. I think he's better. I think he's better. Nice. I think, I think, I think, I think I'm going to kneecap you on the way out so you don't steal my job. <laughs> Nancy. Okay, so this isn't a graphic novel, but I know that you play most of the time. So this is our picture. Can you say I refuse? I refuse Heaven's Door. I love Rohan. He was, you know, that have such a, all of the JoJo stuff has such a unique look, you know, the animation style. And, uh, and I, every time I would see somebody cosplaying from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure at a convention, I'm like, what, what is this? What is this? And it was always that particular style. So when I got to play that role, I was really excited because I've always loved JoJo. Favorite, favorite scene. Favorite scene. Um, 
I don't know if it was a favorite scene per se, but I look back sometimes at some of the the quotes from some of the scripts, and they're uh, shockingly inappropriate sometimes. <laughs> um, you know, quotes like, uh, the ocean is so salty because people pee in it. <laughs> really? Um, things like that. Uh, there's always a... Or fish peeing it. It was fish peeing it was the line. They do. Yes. Yeah, so uh, I don't know what the writers were thinking sometimes, and then they would hand this to us, and we're like, hmm, all right. Uh, this is going to be a panel question someday. Yeah. Uh, so for me, it was uh, it was th some of the bizarre lines that would catch us off guard, because when we were starting, we were recording directly from the Japanese record, and a lot of times it didn't convey, like, you know, there's Goku with a beer, and we're like, this isn't going to fly over here. Um, it's going to get changed to something else. Or, you know, go hand running around naked, jumping out of, uh, you know, a lake. And you're like, that that's not going to work. Um, so for me, it was the shocking stuff that we're not used to seeing in North American animation. I absolutely love the scene in the, uh, in the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie a few years back. Um, you know, I always loved playing Broly, but he, just, he was just so angry and you know fought and yelled destruction all the time for 15 plus years typecasting pretty much pretty much he's like this deep right and and you didn't really know much about him or understand why he was so angry all the time but then when the new movie came out and it was kind of Toriyama's vision of the character and there was more story there was more background to why he was the way he was and my favorite scene, and it's not a yelling scene, it's when he's telling the story about Ba, the, the, the big creature that he made friends with on the planet, and then his dad didn't like them being friends, and his dad shot the big creature's ear off, and Broly wears it around his waist, and he's like, he's like, I to remember when we were friends. Oh my gosh. I love that scene. When we finished recording, I'm like, can I do it again? <laughs> and they're like, no, it was fine the first time. I'm like, yeah, but it, all the rest of it's yelling and fighting and killing. And I just want to do that really nice scene one more time. Um, I really enjoyed in Dragon Ball Super getting to finally, after 25 years, act with Goku. So when Goku uh, and Android 17 are together, I really think it was like Laurel and Hardy. It was like old school vaudeville. Because like, uh, you know, just Goku's so, such a dork. And uh, Android 17 was just not having any of it. I also like Android 13 uh, saying, don't you lecture me with your $30 haircut. Uh, which uh, I'm, th I'm thinking, you know, because back then when we recorded that, that was an expensive haircut. And now it's kind of a cheap haircut. So uh, I think they need to re-record that and say, don't you lecture me with your $100 haircut. It's a meme now. They got to keep, really really? keep the sling blade in there, though, I think. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I'm thinking haircut. for my uh, TikTok, I'm thinking of just going up to people with interesting haircuts and just filming myself saying, don't you lecture me with you, you know, right next to somebody with a weird haircut. Any other questions? Anyone? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Well, I guess as long as we're on the topic of $30 haircuts, are you aware of a website that just plays that sound bite and then people can just play whatever other silly sounds? There's a whole website dedicated yeah, to that? Yeah, it starts out with, don't you let me with that $30 haircut, and then people can just put their own little silly sound effects. I've got, what's it called? What's the website name? Um, I'll just, I think if you look up, don't you 